welcome back to another video on Gearsaw Studios and today I'm going to show you how to build a skyscraper because skyscrapers are the heart of the city and if your city doesn't include one well certainly you're gonna need some and before I begin remember please like and subscribe and without further ado on to the tutorial and we're going to start out with a large pallet because of course this is a large building roughly equivalent to this hotel over here, which this video could just easily be a hotel tutorial if you just make the rooms bedrooms instead of offices. But besides that, we're going to use acacia planks for the floor, blue concrete for the walls, or just any vibrant thing. Then we have light gray concrete on the ceiling, which very easily could be substituted for a cyan terracotta, which I think I'm going to do. Then you need to separate these with some white concrete, which we're going to use a lot of on the exterior, gray concrete as just a border. We might use white gray concrete, I just get some just in case. Cyan terracotta for trim and just borders. We already know what we're going to do with blue concrete. Azalea for the exterior, just landscaping, along with the deep slate. Ultra frog lights for the ceiling, glass panes for the windows, dark oak planks for furniture, along with the trapdoor variant and deep slate, which of course is going to go with the azaleas. Don't forget to silk touch some ores if you're feeling fancy. Then get yourself a decently large area, and make sure it's decently tall. I'd say around 50 to 70 blocks would be good. With our location chosen, we should now just make a rectangle. And there's nothing to this rectangle, it doesn't even have to be segmented weirdly. Instead, we just make a rectangle. This boat is of course modern, so if you look at any of my previous tutorials, we throw my three segment rule out the window. So this is going to be a little bit more unique for recurring viewers. And once we have our rectangle ready, we want to have two extra rectangles on either side. They should be a little bit smaller, and these can act as just outdoor areas. Albeit this rectangle is a little too small, so extend it until you feel like it's looking good. With our strange shape here, we now can continue building. And in order to figure out how we're going to connect these, well, find the middle. And this is about the middle. Punch out roughly five blocks. Depending on the size of your build, it can be bigger or smaller. Then. Just get a little bit of gray concrete to mark out the zone. Because we're going to have a large band of this going across the sides of the building. So, of course, we're going to have to mark this. And, with this going, then place down some deep slate on the edges. And this deep slate should be two or three blocks high. Once you have the deep slate in, mirror it to the other side. I've added some deep slate walls on the sides, and then just gave them an outline of signed terracotta. And albeit this might seem like a strange choice, it actually does work out in the end. So first you want to add some low value ores like redstone, iron, coal, well maybe not coal, that's actually really rare in the deep slate form. But anyways, waste these walls with some ores that you don't need. And make sure they're the deep slate variant. Then. You can either place down some vines in front of them, or you can place down some azalea bushes. Either one's okay, but of course, it's all you. So I've had a little bit of a jump cut here, but essentially what you want to do is add some landscaping. I recommend azalea bushes. You can make all of them flowering if you want, so it looks good due to the low quantity. And we have deep slate here, so you can put in some slabs and stairs in order to make it appear cracked. Of course, they'd have to be cobbled deep slate, kind of like this. And depending on how you look at the build, you might not necessarily like that. So, it's completely optional for that. Otherwise, just continue with the, the build, and you can place down some vines in front of this to add a little bit more details. And on top of it, place down some grass to add some more azalea bushes, but in the form of leaves. Since this video is likely to be long, 
I'm just going to quickly just go through the rest of the steps for making these good. So first, we can change these rectangles to have curved edges by replacing the block we have right here and placing two more on these sides. Also, try hiding some ultra frog light somewhere in there, and these can be substituted for sea lanterns. Add some vines with some ores behind it and replace the blocks that the azaleas are growing on with moss because that changes, well, never, unlike grass which changes depending on what biome you're in. Then we can finally move on to our main building, which we are going to have four offices per four of this skyscraper, so we're going to just have to expand the build a little bit in order to accommodate. Then you want to start dividing the floors which can be quite complicated, but think about how tall you want it to be before you start dividing up the floors. With the skyscraper schematic a little bit larger, we can now separate these floors. We want the lobby floor to be a little bit bigger, so we just make it taller on this. And this strange object is how we're going to divide the floors. Essentially, you can use these as a schematic because the two block thick parts are where the floor and ceilings are going to be, while this just one block thick part is where we can actually have our rooms. Stack this up a lot, and once you're at a comfortable height, start replacing the ground in this room with acacia planks, and making sure that the cyan terracotta aligns like this. You don't have to place acacia planks on the first block outward like this, because we're going to have double thick walls. With the height established and the lobby starting to be built, we need to establish the entrance, which means find the middle of your build. And a good way to do this is place an equal amount of blocks on each side, and wherever they meet up must be the entrance. And you can see it's a big build, so we have to place down a lot of blocks, and it should be an odd number. If it's an even number, your build isn't dead, but you might want to rethink your build. So we want to place down some gray concrete on either side, break down the wall here, remove these filler blocks, and we can then make our entrance. We don't need actual doors here. Instead, we can do the intensely layered carpet trick which prevents anything from getting inside. Just a little example, we can grab some gray carpet, and if we place it about four blocks, four or five, then nothing can pathfind into here, which means your building is secure like this. And once you have that, you can now just move on to your next steps. With our carpets now in place, we now want to have this room get walls. And the outer walls, since these are two blocks thick, should be white concrete. And this is going to be quite an expensive build, but if you are building a city, then I assume that you probably have enough materials for this. Then, replace this area with grey concrete just to make it match a little better, along with the floor here. And you want to make this orange concrete here, because this is the interior now. Since we have that going, make the interior walls orange concrete with the exterior white concrete. On top of that, since we have these gray concrete things going upwards, we want to have the thing in the middle be white. So all the way up until there should be white. With the ground level sort of complete, we now need to just put on a ceiling for this. And the ceiling should also be orange, so just fill it in. And once you're finished, you'll end up with a dark room. And of course, that's not um, good. And how do we solve it? Well, frog lights. We get some cyan terracotta, some frog lights, and you can see it's probably annoying for you mobile users, but now we have something going on. So roughly every five blocks or so, you should place down some frog lights, with it being about three blocks from the corners like this, and just count the blocks. Once you're done with that, you will have a nicely lit up room, which you should count the middle. So place down a block in the middle, so that way you have it for future reference. With our lighting, we now just have 
dark spots, and you know, that's not very good. But there certainly is a solution. This is our middle block right here, and we can place a frog weight under it, that helps a little. And if we just add a chair, dark oak as always, albeit we can add quartz for the outside, you can see that, oh, well it seems like my knowledge is mistaken, but still, we can see that we have a chair here, and we can build a receptionist desk around it, which can have some stairs, which we can hide frog lights under. So, make a receptionist desk, and add some other chairs around here. As we fill up this interior, we should begin adding carpets, and just other things. But you may have noticed that I've added a strange structure here. This is an elevator, which is not functional at all. And I do not plan on making it functional because I don't particularly want to go into redstone. And we can just make a spiral staircase. So, spiral staircases are very simple structures. We just need a 3x3 three three shaft. And we should probably add more lighting to this spot. And, well, you can just add lighting wherever because this is a building. But essentially, you just want to make a 3x3 three three shaft. And if you don't know how to make a spiral staircase, you just place slabs, make it go half a block up, and you just go up forever. So, make a shaft for that and continue filling up this room. Along with one other thing. You might have to rebuild your entrances for this, but we need it so this tall gray line roughly correlates to this area right here. Which means the ending point of this needs to be right here, where the ceiling begins. Which means the second floor would be right about here where the sign terracotta is. So, you might have to rebuild everything on the entrances for that, but trust me, it does make it look significantly better. We have the first floor done, and we can see we got quite a reception desk. We have a file cabinet over here filled with backwards looms, tables, cartography tables, and move tables, some nice seating outside and overall just a nice area to hang out so what we need to do now is make our first floor up here and we start by making the exact same thing we have down here the acacia planks and yeah there's really nothing to say about this part just place down a ton of acacia planks to be your floor of course we're going to have double thick walls so you can remove this outer block I made a small area for the elevator shaft, not because we're going to do it, because we're still just going to ignore it, and just so this place makes sense and we don't have just a 1-4 elevator that just goes nowhere. Once we have this, establish where you want the walls, and you should try maximizing space but keep this area in the middle behind the white concrete open, and preferably you should have 4 rooms when you're done. Mark your areas using cyan concrete, I mean terracotta. With the areas defined, we now just add walls to this place, but only on the interior. On the exterior, we want to have our normal white walls. So just place down your blue concrete for now, and you can also add the ceiling. I've made a small model of what the room should look like when done, so you should be able to roughly figure out what it's going to look like. Of course, you know, this is a video, so you could just wait about, like, 15 seconds. With the walls now in place, we now have to make space for our windows. Which means we have to cut these walls short. And over on these gray things, just a quick favor you can do yourself for building these. Just make these go all the way to the top of the building on both sides. No white in the middle. And same thing for the front and back with this part, you can just mirror it make it wrap around the top. And that will make your life a lot easier. But we want to have giant windows on this, which means, of course, we're going to have to dedicate a lot of space for them. Place down some cyan terracotta like this, and we can place down some glass panes as well. Once we have that going, we now have large windows. I'm building the windows now, and they're looking quite nice, albeit I am using connected textures from Optifine, which might not be possible for you guys on Bedrock Edition. 
those of you who do not have any connected glass might find a little bit of annoyance from this. In that case, you could simply just remove the glass, or you could just enjoy a different style, albeit this one does look more modern. Once we have this room ready, we can just kind of cookie cutter this, and then we got all the exteriors. Well, the interiors. And the ceiling is quite simple. We just fill it in with white concrete, and any time we want a light, we just surround it in sign terracotta, and place down an ultra frog light facing vertically. Kind of like this, albeit this position is not final. And look, we now have a light, which means this room is not going to be a mob's room. I have the ceiling in, and well, once you have one room done, in terms of just no details, it's quite easy to do the rest, and once you have that done, the rest of the building becomes just a cakewalk. And the only things you need to do that are actually unique, besides the detailing, which will come soon, is your spiral staircase, your fake elevator, or real if you watch mumbo jumbo at all, and otherwise, there's really just nothing else going on. So, moving on to the exterior, you want to make the very bottom floor have extra supports going into the corners like this. Not in the exact corners though, because I'll give it too much of a box shape. Do this throughout, possibly add some bushes, and you'll be doing good. Each of the rooms are now completed, and well, they're empty. But still, we have a base plate that we can make these into offices. Albeit this does look a lot like a hotel, and you could definitely turn this into a hotel, I'm going to turn this into an office. So, in order to do this, we just get our stereotypical dark oak furniture, and yeah, we just make dark oak furniture, but there's one thing that you should note, and it involves a little bit of concrete powder, so your desk is going to have to be made out of that, but if you get an armor stand, so, you get that, and then you get chainmail helmets. Then, we can dig into the ground, place down two of these, or one. This is just double keyboards for some reason. You can see, we have keyboards now. We can create a chair here, and now, we just have a very powerful computer here. Albeit, you might have to add a little more, especially paintings to act as monitors. And... Just a lot of things like that. You can add beds, you can just add whatever. And if you don't want concrete to be there, then you can use pistons to move whatever piston movable block. Unfortunately, you cannot have an obsidian desk, but still, you can have almost everything be your desk. With each room now decked out with just office things, this one's perhaps a coding room. My cat's meowing at me. This one could be a music room with a nice book, I don't know, maybe just right click to play the horn. Then we have this room, just some gamer dude, not sure. And we have a recording studio. So we just got rooms and now we want to make more. However, if you're in creative mode, you can easily just structure block these. And yeah. You want to make it significantly taller than everything else. Because you can see I only have like 6 or so floors, make it closer to 10. Because this is a skyscraper. Albeit it might mean you need to take down a couple of things, still it is definitely worth it. With our four adequately duplicated, we now have a completed structure. But there are two things left we need to do. One, change the color of the walls for each floor. Because we don't want blue for every single floor. And also add a spiral staircase, so I guess now we have three. But anyways, change the color for each floor's walls. So one could be red, one could be yellow, one could be lime if you desire. But the important thing is that each floor is most likely a different color. It's fine if you have a couple repeats, especially if you have a taller building though. Well, we got all these layers different colors. And albeit this recording studio thing just looks a little awkward, and the fact that for some reason entities did not carry over, 
mainly because that thing's for some reason not default. Still, the main building is done. And the only thing left to do is a small amount of landscaping. And that can be easily done by just adding a couple of hedges in front. You could add a parking lot, but that's something for a different day. And perhaps I could make a tutorial on it, albeit that would be a very boring tutorial, so perhaps not. Anyways, just add some hedges, some freestanding bushes, and you'll be completely done with this build. With the small amount of landscaping done, I'd say this building is complete. If you have a large city, then this definitely needs to be at the heart of it, especially several of them, and albeit it might be expensive, still, this is an excellent villager trading hall, because you can see how many villagers you could pile into here. You'd have a very laggy hotspot where you can do all of your villager trading, and you don't have them trapped in tiny cages, which I say is a nice benefit without sacrificing the raid compatibility, because of course they're elevated all the way up here. So fortunately the vexes probably won't get them. And with that, it's the end of today's video. If you enjoyed this video, remember, please like and subscribe, and I'm still testing out the new music stuff, so I'd like if you were to comment about that. Enjoy the rest of your day, Gearsaw out. <laughs>